Him in my soul. Thank God for Jesus Christ, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, thank God for Jesus Christ. Uh, Happy New Year. Is, isn't it great to be alive? I uh, uh, frequently, uh, uh, Brother L. Page, steal away when I need a moment to just commune with God. And uh, with three kids, it ain't no place in the house um, uh, that one can go uh, to get some communion time with God. And I, I find myself, after I drop my children off at school, uh, that my favorite place is uh, Inglewood Park Cemetery. That sounds a little strange, but it's quiet. <laughs> uh, ain't nobody going to bother you. <laughs> uh, and um, I sit there and uh, me and the Lord have discussions uh, about y'all. Amen. Uh, uh, about me, about my family, about life, and uh, I park in the same place every time. It doesn't have any particular meaning. I just like that spot, and uh, it's by the grave of uh, a young child uh, that uh, only lived to be about two, two years old, and uh, when I see that grave, I just say, God is good. Um, because not only could that have been me, uh, it could have been one of my children. Amen. And I think there's a lot to be thankful for uh, when you put things in perspective. Can you find Matthew 11 for me? Uh, Matthew 11, I want to begin reading at verse number 28. And uh, we're going to uh, start 2012 um, with a theme, a series of messages that have to do with um, uh, the invitations of Jesus. Uh, brothers and sisters, Jesus invites us uh, to do some things. And I want to start uh, with this one because I, I don't think we can talk about his other invitations until we first uh, take him up on this offer. Uh, but the Bible says, Jesus speaking now, it says in Matthew 11, verse number 28, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You see that? Uh, it's a rich text. We're going to get into it. Uh, verse 29 says, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you. Now, I, I want you to understand, uh, Jesus recognized that you carry in a yoke, but the yoke you carry in ain't his. Uh, so he, he asked you, why don't you trade your yoke in for my yoke? So I want you to understand, uh, whether you know it or not, you're walking around with a yoke. And the question is, are you walking around with Jesus' yoke or somebody else's yoke? That's the first thing you need to ask yourself. Uh, come unto me, all you who labor and have a laden, I will give you rest and take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And Jesus says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come unto me. In the minutia of religiosity, can I sound extra intelligent this morning? Uh, uh, in the minute details of your faith, we have gotten away from the true meaning of being a Christian. 
Christians have now been identified with being polished. Um, we, we now make looking good look easy. Um, kind of come across as spiritual elitists. That we always got it together. Always got our I's dotted and our T's crossed. And we have fooled ourselves into thinking that because we look good on the outside, uh, that that's indicative of who we are on the inside. Y'all going to help me preach this morning? Um, but Christianity uh, has no longer been identified with its true purpose. The true purpose of Jesus coming was to set free those that are enslaved. Jesus' mission is to set free those of us who are in bondage. I recognize that because of history and because of what has happened through time that uh, our faith has been uh, associated with uh, being uh, all that in a bag of chips. But Jesus did not start our faith with people who had it all together. As a matter of fact, uh, he was an itinerant preacher who left his job as a carpenter and asked 12 men to leave their jobs to go among the Galilean hillsides to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Bible teaches us that these men often broke Moses' law because they did not wash their hands and they did not be steel on the Sabbath. As a matter of fact, uh, they were labeled as renegades by their peers. Jesus started our faith with a bunch of men who would have never been considered leadership material and a bunch of men who would have never fit in in the synagogue because they broke too many rules. But 2,000 years later, uh, the people associated with Jesus' movement don't break rules. Uh, as a matter of fact, we make rules. The people associated with Jesus no longer are the social outcasts. It's the people who got it all together. You know, those people who has lay in every perfect place. Amen, somebody. You, you know, the people who, 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 who look like uh, they're super spiritual because they got a big, gigantic, giant print King James version of the Bible that should sit on your coffee table, but they drag it in the church because they want to have a big Bible to show off. And fr Amen, somebody. Uh, Christianity now has become a, a, a religion for people who always got it together. The problem is Jesus' invitation is not for people like that. As a matter of fact, Jesus' invitation is for people who, try, who are tired of trying to keep up that facade. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, if you're tired of trying to be all that in a bag of chips, drop that yoke and let me handle your messiness for you. Somebody going to help me with this. Uh, Judaism in the time of Jesus had become a, a, a minor factor in the Gentile world. There uh, were Jews who, of course, wanted to stay separate separate from Gentiles but they had to live and and since they had to live and they didn't uh, own the place they didn't run the place they their leadership wasn't in control they had to deal with Gentiles but remember now uh, uh, Jews was never want to actually have to deal with a person who was a heathen uh, but because because Caesar was on the throne because Rome had occupied Jerusalem uh, they had to go along to get along uh, and as a matter of fact uh, being a good Jew was more like a luxury if you were going to observe all of the ceremonial laws as a matter of fact it was very difficult if you were going to live in Jerusalem and not have to deal with a Gentile 
And you was either going to have to work with them. You was either going to have to work for them or you was going to have to use their money. You were going to have to, in some kind of way, uh, uh, be in such close contact and proximity with them that they just might rub off on you. But brothers and sisters, what this did was it actually made those who had to live like that live in a state of ritual uncleanness because they were always dealing with heathens. And the Jews believe that you're supposed to separate from the heathens. You shouldn't, you shouldn't deal with heathens. Matter of fact, uh, they're, they're unclean, and if you touch them, you unclean too. So I want you to think about it. The poor folk who had to work for a Gentile, live with the Gentiles, and, and, and use the public facilities that the Gentiles controlled, a good upstanding Jew would say, you always dirty. Hmm. Preacher, where are you going with this? Well, can you imagine trying to live like a good Jew, but you can't because you always associate it with being unclean? Oh, no, 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 no. You can't relate to that. What if I told you that there are certain sins you can commit as a Christian? where people automatically associate you with uncleanness. Or y'all don't miss this. Y'all do recognize we have what we consider some heinous crimes that you can commit in the church of my Lord. And and if you commit them, uh, you're going to always be walking around ritually unclean. Are y'all looking at me funny? If you get a divorce, amen, somebody. Hmm. Some of us will say you ain't no good to help nobody. See, you're walking around habitually. Come on, somebody unclean. You know why? Because we say, well, if you get married again or if your wife get married again, then you're always committing adultery. And so we have said to people who who have been divorced, you can't serve. Now, y'all see what I'm talking about? You can be ritually unclean. What happened if you're single? But you're living with, amen, somebody. <sighs> Habitually unclean. You can come to church and folk look down their nose at you because they know what you was doing last night. And you better not get up there and try to serve me communion. Amen. So it's getting quiet now. I know you ain't going to leave something. Amen, somebody. How they ask you to lead the prayer? See, see, there's some heinous crimes you can commit and always have them on your record. Am I right about it? When you, when you go to apply for a job, there's a little box you got to check that says, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Well, in the church, as soon as you show up, first thing we want to know is, have you ever been convicted? Can I make it real? You left here with a wife. You came back without one. Amen, Walls. Uh, you, you left here with children. I don't see you with them now. Uh, uh, you left here uh, uh, this way, but you came back looking like this. Uh, what did you do? Am I right about it? Jesus says to his audience, if you are sick and tired, of trying to hop to and look pretty and have it all together and always know what to say and what to do. If you are sick and tired of trying to keep up with the rest of the folk who are out pacing you, if you are spiritually inept, if you get C's in Sunday school, if you're the kind of person who don't get it right, you need to come to me. Jesus bids us to come. The question is, why? The reason why Jesus asks us to come is because doing it the way you doing it ain't working for you. As a matter of fact, you wasting time and energy 
Because Jesus only calls those who are weary and tired. So I want you to look at it like this. Uh, he's calling for those who got an issue carrying around their sin. Now I'm going to really mess with your world. I grew up listening to this text with the preacher standing up saying, oh, bring Jesus your trials and your tribulations and your rent and your job situation and he'll give you rest and bring him your sickness. And uh, guess what? Yes, Jesus can and will help you with your rent, your sickness, and your children's. But guess what? Jesus ain't asking you to bring you, uh, bring him your trials and tribulation. Jesus is asking for your sin. I see that messes with us because we want to take this text and run with the fact that we can take all our tribulation to Jesus and leave them there. Well, he'll take them, but in this text, Jesus is asking for the sinners to come here. Now, if you don't understand what it means to be a sinner, this text ain't for you. I'm only talking to those that are sick and tired or carrying around the luggage associated with being whatever you are. That's why many of us dress it up. That's why many of us make it look real good. But on the inside, we're rotten. We're suffering. We're trying to cover up our scars. We put that kind of makeup that make it blend in so you can't tell that we've been beat up, battered, bruised, and worn. We'll walk around covering it up with nice clothes. But on the inside, we're tired. Jesus says, come unto me an interesting thing is the word come means it's in the imperative form which means to don't be where you are come over here where I am it is a verb associated with motion which means if you're going to come to Jesus you're going to have to come on you, you can't sit where you are religiously you got to come on you can't sit where you are emotionally you're going to have to come on you got to stop thinking about uh, how people look at you and come on. You got to not worry about whether or not you got your eyes dotted and T's cross. Jesus said, you just going to have to come on. Now, who he begs to come are people that are sick and tired of lifting heavy weights. The Bible says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. The word labor means to be sore from hard work. Any of y'all know what it means to be sore at the end of the day? Lifting, carrying, back breaking work. At the end of the day, every muscle in your body Amen, somebody. You know when you've been on your feet all day and then you finally sit down, your feet throb with a heartbeat. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Anybody tried to move and had to move like in one day? Y'all know when you got to be out of this place today, but the place where you going to move, you can't be till tomorrow. You got to like hurry up quick, get out and get it. Amen, somebody. And you know when you lift furniture... And, and luggage and bags, you get cramps in your hands. Uh, Jesus says, those of you who are woe out from carrying your burdens. Now, this is where it's about to get real quiet, and that's all right. So I'm going to preach to myself right now. Um, what kind of burdens do I carry because of my sin? Shame. You know, when you mess up but don't want to tell nobody what you did. That's the reason why we come down front. You make sure you're real unspecific. Because you don't want nobody to trace and put stories together. Your mama said that two weeks ago when she asked for prayer. Then she stood up and said this. Uh, and it take ten days to get over that. And now, two plus two equal... So you don't want nobody figuring it out. So we come across like, pray for me. I'm struggling. And that's all right, but you know the reason why you do that? Because you don't want nobody to know your stuff. Can we just be honest? There's shame associated 
Now, it used to be, used to be, uh, some stuff was shameful that for whatever reason, now we just gotten so used to it. Ain't no shame no more. You know, when I was a kid, uh, a young lady get pregnant, didn't have a husband, was ooh ooh. You know, now, that's kind of the order we follow now. Amen, was. You used, used to be ashamed. And guess what? But people who did that, you know what they used to do when you was 14 and got pregnant? They would ship you to go live with your auntie in Mississippi. <laughs> Unless you was in Mississippi, then they shipped you to California. Somebody know what I'm talking about? It used to be a time when you and wifey didn't work out. Uh, y'all moved away. You didn't stay at the same congregation. <sighs> it's getting quiet. You know, we there's shame associated with some stuff. But Jesus says, bring me your shame. See, so the thing is, Christ knows you're a sinner. You ain't fooling him. So what you carrying? Uh, if you gave, if you gave your life to the Lord and got buried in baptism, guess what happened? He dealt with your sin, but you still got shame. And when you mess up after you get baptized, you still got what? Shame. You also might suffer from guilt. Guilt is when you feel badly about what you have done or caused others to do. And some sins we commit have long-term consequences. And every day you see that person, you think about what you did. As a matter of fact, we'll even accept a guilt for, as, as being something from God because we think that's the punishment we're supposed to get for having messed up. And it's real quiet now. See, I know why I'm going through this because, see, I messed up back in 1957 and God is making me bad is because I sinned that one time and guess what? Now I'm walking around still paying for it. That's not what it means to be in Christ Jesus. We got that all mixed up. Some of us walking around acting like God is punishing us and taking it out on us. Uh, God is a forgiving God. And let me tell you something. If he was so mad at you, based on what you did, he could have took you out the moment you did it. So, why does Jesus ask us to come to him? I'm going to stop here because I don't, we, we got to come back next week. Watch this. Um, brothers and sisters, God's presence is associated with rest. You can't separate rest from God's presence. Jesus says, instead of trying to live up to the laws and the rule books, come dwell in my presence. Come unto me. Can I show you this in the scripture? Exodus 33, really quickly. I want to show you this. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I'm not going to go too much farther because I don't want to, to rush, but I want to show you something. In Exodus 33, uh, L. Page, interesting text. Uh, Moses was getting sick and tired of dealing with God's people. Uh, you know what it's like when you get uh, a little worn out uh, sometimes with people. You get worn out with your family, worn out with the people on your job, and you need a vacation. Uh, anybody ever needed a vacation? Uh, and, and, and Moses was at the point where he was getting real tired of the Israelites because all they was doing was complaining and murmuring about what they didn't have. And, oh, how I wish we were still in Egypt. It's better to be a slave than it is to be out here with God. We don't know where our next meal is going to come from. Why we got to live out here in the middle of nowhere? What is this? And they just griping and belly aching. And Moses was getting kind of mad. And, and, and so he goes to God and says, Lord, please help me. Help me deal with them. And, and then he says, please, just, just let me know, am I doing what's right by still being on the job? 
uh, uh, he was wondering to himself, uh, am I doing the right thing uh, by, by, by continuing to put up with this or should I just walk? Because uh, I'm tired and I'm sick of this foolishness and I'm ready to go. And God says, hold on, man, let me give you some encouragement. So in Exodus 33, uh, we're going to begin reading. We're going to be- begin reading verse number 11 because I think it's a wonderful p- uh, phrase in this verse you need to understand. The Bible says in Exodus 33 and verse number 11, so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face. As a man speaks to his friend. You see that? Uh, see that, that? That makes the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, take on extra significance, doesn't it? God spoke to him as a friend, as he would, uh, and he would return to the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, young man, did not depart from the tabernacle. Verse number 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, see, you say to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also uh, faced, uh, found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way. In other words, Moses said, tell me what to do, Lord. I need some help. Y'all see that? All right. Uh, that I might know you and I might find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And God said, My presence will go with you. Now, New King James says, I will give you rest. Some of your versions say, I will give you victory. I think I'll take either one. But I want you to watch this, though. Moses says, you're going to take these people. Y'all going to have to fight off your enemy. It's going to be some nights where uh, your enemy going to camp against you and you think uh, that, that I'm not here. It's going to be some times uh, where you don't know what to do and you're going to think I'm not here. But my presence is with you so you can have rest. Now, I'm going to preach it both ways. If you're a good old-fashioned King James person, and that's what you love to hear, the Bible says victory. Well, guess what? Uh, In Christ Jesus, in the Lord, his presence equals victory. You know what that means? We don't need God to do nothing but show up. Amen, somebody. Lord, will you do this? Lord, will you do that? Lord, just show up. And I know I'm going to have the victory because God don't lose. And if I'm on the Lord's side, I can't lose because I'm with him. But if you want to argue that the word is rest, then God showing up means you can kick back. God showing up means you ain't got to worry. You know, kind of like Greyhound. Leave the driving. Somebody going to help me. When, 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 when you in the presence of the Lord... You take a load off. My father used to say, make yourself at home. Y'all know what that is? Get comfortable. Uh, 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 kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Somebody say amen. Uh, you, you can relax uh, uh, when, when God shows up and, and you are in his presence. Now, Israel understood that God's promised presence meant that they didn't have to worry about nothing. Then Jesus steps on the scene in Matthew 11 and says, I will give you rest. Now to a good Israelite who grew up knowing the scripture, that sounds like Jesus is saying, that he's in the place of God. You say, well, preacher, well, we know that. Well, they didn't. Jesus is saying, I am he. And I will give you rest. Y'all know, y'all know what really ticked the Pharisees off about Christ? Not that he healed folk. It's that he forgave sin when he did it. 
And the argument against Jesus was only God can forgive sin. Who are you forgiving folks sin? And that was the problem they had with him. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that are sick and tired of carrying around the sin, shame, and guilt from what you did, and I will give you rest. That's 2012. And I'm sick and tired of carrying the luggage from last year. I ain't going to bring it into this shit. I'm going to leave it back there. Don't you want to leave yours back there? Give it to Jesus. Come unto me. Now, I told you that Jesus recognizes that you carrying around something. The question is, what are you carrying around? Now, can I go? I'm going to go James Austin on you and just say, I ain't going to cuss, but I'm going to go James Austin on you. Um, um, Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, Y'all know what this is? This is your country boys know this. Come on, Claude. This it's a yoke. Now, you put two animals side by side in a yoke. Now, I need two animals. <sighs> Horace, you mind being one of them? I thank you. Appreciate that. Horace is going to be one of my animals. Y'all give some love to Horace Johnson. I, I, I need a little animal. All the little animals sleep because cause they was up late last night. My, my kids are asleep. Look at them. Okay. I need a, I need a little animal. Where's, where's Mike at when you need him? Where's Mike at? Okay. I need a, okay. Come on, baby. I, I, I'll take you. you this, here we go. All right. All right. Now, what's, what's your name? Leah, are you shaking? Don't shake, baby. They're not looking at you. They're looking at me, okay? Don't worry about it. They'll look at me. I'll just act like you're invisible, okay? Don't be nervous. All right. Now, um, Jesus said you yoked to something. Okay? Now, Aaliyah, that's your name. Aaliyah, how old are you? Nine. Oh, Aaliyah is not. I got a nine-year-old son, Aaliyah. What school you go to? <laughs> Who your mama? I'm just messing with you, girl. I'm just messing with you. You better set these things up by the young. All right. Now, Aaliyah represents all of us who have to wear one of these. Okay? Now, Aaliyah's yoke goes around her neck, but she got pretty hair, and I don't want to mess it up, so I'm going to hold this for her. But, Aaliyah, I want you to stand still. And let Brother Tyson do all the work, all right? All right. Now, this goes around Aaliyah's neck, just like that. Y'all see that? Everybody see that? And we all are walking around tied to something. You see that? Now, typically, two oxen are put in a yoke because they both can carry a heavy load. But if you put an oxen in with a donkey, who carry all the load? The oxen. Anybody ever been a pallbearer before? Uh, and the brothers on the other side of the box ain't carrying their weight? It, uh, 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 note, note to self, anybody, male or female, if you ever a pallbearer, always be the guy in the middle. <laughs> guy in the middle don't carry nothing. The ones in the front and the back, they do all the heavy lifting. When I was 17 years old, my grandfather died. I had just gotten my wrist out of a cast, had my uh, uh, surgery, broke my wrist really bad, had pins and everything. I couldn't lift a thing. They put me on the, ca- on the side of the casket with my weak hand. I don't think I did anything but put my hand on the casket. I ain't lift nothing. All right? Now, when you walk around yoked to something, uh, if it's bigger than you, then you don't really carry much of anything. The yoke is designed for two animals to pull in tandem together. 
All right? All right. Leah, you stand right there for me, all right? Now, Jesus says, take my yoke, which means he also wants you to wear one of these. But the yoke is tied to him. All right. Now, whores get to be Jesus in the story. All right. He get to be the good guy. All right. Y'all, y'all think your big head can go through there. It is. All right. Hope my arm don't get tired. Click. Okay. Now, now, if Jesus says, yoke yourself with me, and he is bigger than you, then who does the heavy lifting? Can I paint a picture for you? Your sin, your guilt, your shame, your looking bad, your scars, uh, your stench. Jesus says, yoke yourself to me. Now, the promise he makes is that his burden is easy. The question, church, we got to ask is, why is his burden easy? His burden is easy because you ain't doing no lifting. Jesus is doing the carrying. So, if you yoke to trying to look good for other people's sake, After a while, that's going to get heavy. (sighs) I got to do this again. I got to keep up this lie. I I, got to look. I don't feel like looking good today. Oh, that's all right. I just won't go. That's how I'll remedy that. I'm sick and tired of going to church anyway, y'all. Get on my nerves down there because y'all always expect me to. Isn't that what we do? I don't have nothing to wear. I ain't got that much gas in the car. I have the sniffles. They ought to keep us at home. Why? Because you don't want to yoke yourself to people who are making you carry heavy burdens. Jesus says, take my yoke on you. Now, if Jesus is carrying the shame and the burden of the guilt, why are you still walking around with it? Ali, I appreciate your help, baby. Why don't you go back and sit down, okay? All right, baby Jesus, you go ahead and go too. Appreciate that. Why are you still walking around with your head down? Why are you still walking around acting like you're not good enough? Why are you still walking around like God don't love you? Why are you still walking around? Let me tell you something. We all have skeletons. And some of us got walk-in closets. Can we be honest? The problem is, Jesus knows where your skeletons are. So be real with him. And once you're real with the Lord, then the rest of us don't matter. Well, they look at me funny. They gonna look at you funny regardless. Well, they gonna think I'm a this. Well, let them think it. That's all right. Let them people think what they want. Opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody got one. You ask me, mine going to be different from somebody else. We all got opinion. Y'all know what I always say. They're going to talk about you till you go crazy. And when you go crazy, they're going to talk about you. <sighs> you can't win. Jesus says, yoke yourself to me. Now, brothers and sisters, can we take Christ up on his invitation? I only got to the first 
first promise he makes. He gives three invitations and five promises, but he asks you to to come. I'm going to open this invitation to you. Will you come to the Lord? Are you sick and tired of carrying around a load that ain't meant for you to carry? Many of us are struggling because we feel bad about what we've done. And that godly sorrow and remorse is good if it drives you to the Lord. But the Lord don't want you to walk around with it because he asked you for it. The question is, will you give it to him? If you're here and you're not a child of God, he wants you to come. Well, I got to get some stuff straight. No, you don't. Because whatever it is you got to get straight, you can't get straight without Christ. So this way you ought to come first. Do this first. Then we can work on your stuff. Or brother Moore, I'm I have addictions. I don't know if I'm going to be able to say no to tomorrow. Will you say yes to Jesus today? We'll worry about tomorrow if you get it tomorrow. Let's worry about what Jesus asked for right now. Brother Moore, I'm I'm struggling because I love the women. I understand. God made them look like that for a reason. But will you come to the Lord? I'm not, I'm not done soiling my wild oats. Be careful about wild oats. Because you do reap now. Will you come to the Lord? Maybe you already have. But you're walking around taking this spiritual woman like a good person. Spiritual uh, whooping like a good person. Because you think this is what God wants. So you walk around tired and dejected and act like God is taking it out on you for messing up back in the day. That's not what Jesus died for. Jesus died to set you free. That's why he said in John 8, 31, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I want somebody to be free in 2012. Will you be free this morning? You come to him by faith. It takes faith. Next time, we're going to deal with the yoke of the law. Because the people Jesus was dealing with, they had to keep a strict law, and they weren't good at keeping all the rules. And Jesus calls it a yoke. That's why he asked you to trade that yoke in for his If you found yourself breaking too many rules and you don't know what to do, come unto me. If you're tired of walking around, fronting and faking, come unto me. You come to him by faith. If you're not a member of the church, guess what happens? When you come to him, we come being willing to change our mind. That's repentance. You got to change how you think about your situation. We confess with our mouths that he's the Christ. We get buried in water baptism. We come up new creatures in Christ. Remain faithful unto death and heaven be our home. If you hear you already remember, you too got to come by faith. Because it takes a leap of faith to step out and say, I need help. See, for you to do that means you're brave. For you to stay in your seat means you're scurred. Don't be scared. Now, if you want some encouragement about whether or not you should come and give yourself to the Lord and cast these burdens on, just know that everybody you stand in front of also has stuff they carrying around. No matter how good they make it look, everybody in this room carrying around something.
If you ready to get rid of your load, you can do it right now. If you got a problem that's bigger than you, but not bigger than God, give it to him right now. Jesus says, come unto me. Can you stand to your feet? Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on earth thou art calling, do not pass me by, God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Lord, hear my humble cry. 